<clears throat> Good morning. Glad to see everybody here for morning worship here at the Nicholasville Church of Christ. Let everybody get settled in. If you're visiting with us, please do us the honor of filling out a uh, connection card that should be located on the back of the pews. You can also find a QR code if you're so intellectually and technologically uh, inclined. You can scan and do the same thing online just so we can have a record of your attendance. As everyone's getting seated in, we're getting our minds focused on worship. Again, it's good to see everybody. I know for the opening prayer, we have a uh, continue to keep Gunner in our thoughts this morning. He is still in the ER right now at this time, but we're understanding it may not have been a kidney stone this morning. It was probably a kidney infection. So, but similar treatments for it. So it's good that uh, as soon as we get finished with worship this morning, we'll probably go down and head down and I'm sure Chas will have me go pick him up. So let's keep them in our mind. Without further ado then, because Gunner will not be here, just a scripture reading. And we'll, and we'll go from there. I'll turn it over to Lee. Our scripture reading before uh, Nathaniel leads us in our singing uh, is 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Good morning. If you would please stand with me as you're able. Join me in singing, I want to be a worker. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust his holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Thank you. 
It's in the deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom. By water still or troubled sea, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own hand, he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory is won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own hand, he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for awaking us and giving us the opportunity to come and worship you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and, and gather as, as your people and, and be amongst each other and learn more of your word. Lord, we thank you and we, and we pray that you be with us this morning, be with us through the lesson Allow us to, to listen and, and be able to apply what we learned this morning to our daily lives. Uh, allow what, what, we, what we hear and learn, we are able to go out and be a light to others to, to bring them closer. We pray that if there's anyone out there this morning that's listening, that, that what they hear this morning pricks their hearts and may lead them closer to you. Lord, at this time, we... Send out a prayer for those that are unable to be with us this morning, those that are sick. We pray that you uh, will be with them, place your healing hand upon them, and we pray that they can return and be back with us soon. Lord, we also just pray for those that are struggling spiritually or emotionally. We pray that you be with them. We pray that they know that they can turn to you for anything. Lord, we just, again, thank you for this opportunity. Please be with us in, in this service this morning. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would please stand again as you're able. Our song before Lee brings us our message will be living by faith. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting can Tempest. 
mists may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of life. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies, the master looks on at the strife. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From a harm safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care, though the tempest may blow, if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting can Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, as I was preparing uh, for this morning's sermon, uh, my mind went back to my freshman year of college uh, when I hadn't declared a major yet, and so my time was spent taking courses to fulfill my general education requirements, or gen eds, as we, as we called them, and one of those was a physical education uh, requirement. And to fulfill that, I took a class on racquetball. Uh, has anyone here ever played racquetball before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I had, I had informally played it in high school. I didn't really know all the rules, but I knew enough to, like, have fun and, and uh, was playing that. And so I thought I'd really enjoy taking this class. I thought it'd be an easy way to get a gen ed requirement out of the way. A course on racquetball probably doesn't sound like too hard of a class. Uh, it's one of those classes that people ought to be able to make an A in as long as you just show up and play the sport, uh, because they can't really give you a bad grade if you just happen to not be all that skilled at racquetball. That's too unfair, that's too subjective. So this ought to be a class where I get an A. I got a B in that class, uh, and I wasn't too thrilled about that. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with a B, a B is a good grade, uh, but I had no reason to think that that would happen in this case. I had no reason to think this class would be all that hard. It, it, it really should have been an A here, but instead, uh, I got a B. And I didn't get a B because I'm a terrible racquetball player. I'm actually not half bad uh, at, at the sport. I got a B because the coach, uh, who, was, who was the teacher, who was the, the basketball coach, uh, but he, he was also teaching the class, and he gave us very detailed, very specific exams that covered every single little tiny rule and regulation for the sport. And there are a lot of little rules and regulations that go into racquetball that I hadn't realized when I was just playing for fun in high school. Uh, you don't really need to know all these little technicalities to just get with a friend and play a game and have fun. Uh, but if you want to play the sport for real, then all these technicalities are part of it. And I couldn't keep them all straight. I got several of them wrong on the exams, and so I got a B. So my grade makes it look like I only kind of know racquetball, uh, especially since this is a class where I probably should have gotten an A. Uh, but if someone had actually just watched me play the sport during that uh, semester, they would see that I didn't just kind of know the sport. I was actually uh, pretty good at it. So what I could do was a far better indication of how well I knew the sport than what I could just say on an exam. Uh, but of course, that's not the way the class worked, and so I still got a B. But this idea of knowing by doing uh, instead of just absorbing certain information or instead of just saying certain things, uh, I think we all know this is a very important principle in life in general. Uh, we all know that experience is often the best teacher, and this is an important biblical truth as well. Uh, we don't really know the Christian life 
until we live it. Even if we have a great head knowledge of what the Bible says and, and what it means, and we don't really know God and we don't really know his son, Jesus Christ, until we live the life uh, that he's called us to. Uh, we may know a lot about all kinds of things. We may be able to really explain uh, the Trinity, and we may really know the life of Christ, and we may be able to talk about the cross and how it atones for our sin and all kinds of things. But if we don't live out Jesus' teachings, then we don't really know him. We don't really know the way of Christ until we've walked in that way, until we've walked in that path. So two weeks ago, we started a series here called Walking in the Light. Uh, and, and this phase of our theme is focused on the book of 1 John, which is where our, our theme verse for the whole year uh, comes from. But John begins this short little book of the Bible by telling us what, and really telling us really who, he knows uh, and who he's seen with his own eyes. And he's talking about Christ himself as he says that. And he talks about how he wants us to know Christ too. He also wants us to know Christ. But he talks about how he wants us to know by doing. He wants us to know Christ by really living the life that he's called us to. So this is how the little book of 1 John begins. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. So John begins here by talking about um, what, how he knows these things. He, he talks about what he knows because of what he's seen, what he's heard, and what he's touched with his own hands. And again, it, it's not really what he's seen, it's who he's seen and heard and touched, and that's the word of life. John begins his gospel actually in a very similar way to the way he begins 1 John. And, and there at the beginning of the gospel of John, he makes it extra clear who the word is. The word is Jesus himself. So this is how the gospel of John begins. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And then skipping down to verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John has seen the word. He's seen Christ, and he's heard him speak. He's touched him with his own hands. And he's one of a fairly good number of people who could actually say that kind of thing. In that time, there were a number of people who followed Jesus around during his ministry and saw him and heard his teachings. Uh, they also watched him die on the cross, uh, and then they saw him again three days later. And, and then they could touch the scars uh, on his hands and, and, and his feet from the nails on the cross. And they, they could also touch the place on, on his side where a soldier pierced him with a spear. So John really knows what he's talking about when he's talking about Jesus. He saw him, he listened to him, he touched him. He knows who Jesus is. He knows who the word of life is. And that's the one who he wants the ones reading 1 John to know too. Imagine what it would be like to live in this time. Imagine what it would be like to live in a time where you could talk to people like John who spent time with Jesus. Imagine what it would be like to, to spend time with people who saw Jesus with their own eyes. If you had that opportunity, if you could go back in time and, and talk to John, what would you ask him? What, what would you want to know about Jesus that you couldn't know from anyone else except someone who saw Jesus with his own eyes? I think a lot of people would want to know the kinds of things we like to know about all people. We probably want to ask questions like, well, what did he look like? What did Jesus look like? How tall was he? What, was, what did his voice sound like? Um, what was he like when he wasn't teaching or performing miracles? Uh, did he have anything that he enjoyed doing just because he enjoyed doing it? Did he have uh, any hobbies? And, and those are all very normal questions for us to ask because as humans we're curious uh, and they're not necessarily bad questions, 
but they're not questions the Bible answers. And notice that specifically John, who's in a perfect position to talk about those kinds of things, he doesn't talk about those things here either because that's not what he wants his readers to know. That's not what the Holy Spirit who inspired uh, him wants us to know. John wants to tell us instead about the life he found in Jesus, the life he found in the word. He, he, tells, he calls here Jesus not just the word and not just the word of God. He's the word of life. And that life was made manifest in him, he says. To see Jesus was to see life itself. And to talk about Jesus was to talk about an eternal life a life that, that cannot die. That's the life that was made manifest, he says in the opening verses of 1 John. That's the life that was made apparent, that was made visible. That's the life John saw and heard, and that's the life he says he also wants to proclaim to his readers, and that's the life that he wants to proclaim to us in this book. John found life in the Word. He found life in Jesus. To be in the presence of Jesus was to be in the presence of life itself. Life, we could say, was just radiating out from Jesus as the word. Uh, the author of Hebrews makes a similar kind of statement uh, when he says that Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. So this is what John wants to make known to us, the life that he found in Christ. Why, though? Why does John want his first readers and why does he want us to know this? Well, the answer basically is love. Uh, John doesn't come right out and say that here uh, in these opening verses, but it's in between the lines of everything that he says in verses 3 and 4. He's writing this, he says, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. John wants others to know the word of life so that he can have a deeper fellowship, a deeper uh, communion, deeper connection with the people he's writing to. But it's not just so that they can be closer to one another. John wants to have better fellowship with his readers because he has close fellowship. He has communion with God. And that's what he wants for us. That's the goal. He wants us to know the word of life like he does. That, he says, at the end of verse 4, is what would complete his joy. And that would complete God's joy as well. That's what he wants for all of us. He wants us to know uh, who he is as revealed in the word of life so that we can share in that life now and share in it for eternity. So what is this life that John is writing about? Uh, what is this life that was so clear in the word, in Christ, that he wants us to know about? And how? That's especially important. How can we know this life? Well, one answer to that is to go read the life of Jesus. Uh, this is something that God has provided for us in the scriptures. He's provided us with four different accounts, and, and three of them are very similar, but four different accounts of Jesus' life, uh, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and we can go read them. Uh, we can go read them and learn what it means for Jesus to be uh, the good teacher for him to be Lord of the universe and Savior of humanity. Uh, we can also learn from Jesus what it means to live as a human. Uh, Jesus was not just God in the flesh. He was fully human as well. And so we see in his life what an authentic human life is meant to look like. Uh, and so this is a great way to learn about the life John is talking about here at the beginning of 1 John. You can go read the life of Jesus. And, and John himself would really like that answer because he wrote one of those four accounts of Jesus' life. He wrote the Gospel of John. But there's another way to know this life, too, besides that. And it's just as important. Uh, and it's not a substitute for reading the life of Jesus. It's a complement to it. We learn what this life is that John wants us to know by living it. We know the word of life by living the life he's given us. We learn by doing. And that second answer, that's the answer that John goes on to give us in the rest of first, uh, in the rest of first John chapter 1. And walking in the light is the way he talks about that. So this is what he says next in verses 5 through 7. He says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. 
But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. God is light, and there's no darkness in him. And that means that if we walk, if we live in darkness while claiming to know him, then we're lying, and we are not practicing the truth. We aren't learning by doing in that scenario. We're actually doing the exact opposite of what we're saying. We're lying. But it's when we're living out our faith that we really have fellowship, that we really have communion with God. And I'm so grateful here for verse 7. Walking in the light does not mean that we never stumble, that we never sin. Uh, John does not say that here. Uh, It does mean that when we sin, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the word of life, uh, cleanses us from all sin. We are continually renewed and, and washed clean when we're practicing the truth, when we're living out our faith. And then John goes on to say this in verses 8 through 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, our, all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So John presents us here with two options. Uh, We can either claim we have no sin and lie, or confess our sins and be forgiven and be cleansed. And notice he says that if we say we have no sin, then the truth is not in us. He also says if we say that his word is not in us. And as he says that, that actually lets us in on what walking in the light looks like. When we're walking in the light, it means the truth is in us. When we're walking in the light, his word is in us. The word of the word of life is in us when we're living out our faith, when we're walking in the light and confessing our shortcomings and sins as we do that. This whole opening section, this whole opening chapter of 1 John on the word of life, and making that life known. It reminds me of another moment uh, in one of John's other writings, and that's in John chapter 4. Jesus is talking there with a Samaritan woman at a well, uh, and he offers her what he calls living water that can spring up in a person's life, welling up to eternal life. And the woman asks Jesus to give him, uh, to give her that water. She really wants that water. She wants it. Do you want the life that God is offering us in Jesus? Jesus is life itself. Real, true, authentic life is radiating out from him. And John wants us to know that and to have that life so that we can have fellowship with him and with God. We can sometimes maybe be tempted uh, to be jealous of someone like John who got to see and hear and touch Jesus for himself. Of course he knows the life that's in Jesus because he was right there in in Jesus' presence. But John wants us to understand that there's another way to know who he knows. There's another way to learn, and that's to learn by doing. Not only hearing about the faith, not only reading about the faith, but fully leaning into it, fully buying into the faith. This is how we're going to get the most thorough glimpse of Jesus we're going to have this side of eternity. This is how we're going to get the most thorough glimpse of the heart of Jesus. This is how Jesus goes from being someone we we know about to someone we know. This is how he becomes our closest, our kindest friend, our most constant companion, Uh, whose mercies are new every morning, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light, uh, who understands us fully, who loves us unconditionally, and who is the source of our very life, a life that is inexhaustible and that will last into eternity. And that's something that cannot be said about anyone or anything else uh, that we may turn to for meaning or for support or to be understood. Jesus is the word of life. And John wants to make him known. And the first thing he says about knowing him is to walk, is to live in the light. And so this morning, if you know you're walking in darkness and you want to come into the light, you want to be uh, renewed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus, uh, God's son, by the blood of the word of life, 
Uh, we extend every Lord's Day that invitation to, to come and, and respond in faith and repentance and be joined with Christ uh, in the waters of baptism for your sins to be washed away and to receive the gift of the Spirit. Uh, or this morning, if you have any other need, we invite you to come now while Nathaniel uh, leads us in our song of invitation. If you would be standing, please. There's a call comes ringing, all the restless waves send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. In the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace be everywhere about. Send the light, send the light, and the Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown of love. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Please be seated. Our song before the Lord's Supper will be, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. Thank you. 
we are about to partake of the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord instituted the, the memorial the same night in which he was betrayed and ultimately led to his death on the cross. The memorial was instituted the same night as the Passover, after supper. The memorial itself was not connected with the Passover because that was done to satisfy the hunger of the individuals. We are here today to remember our Lord, death, burial, and resurrection. And also we're to remember that he's made us a promise that he would come back again to receive us unto himself. That's the big promise. And our faith relies on the fact that he was raised from the dead. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're ever so thankful for this bread which so fitting represents Christ's body upon Calvary's cross, which suffered so much. Be with us now as we remember what he's done for us. In his name, amen. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this fruit of the vine, which represents thy son's blood that was shed upon Calvary's cross. Watch over and care for us in his name. Amen. Separate from the Lord's Supper is the giving of our means. God has blessed everyone here so much. And all he's asking is just a little. Not what's left over. Just give back to him what's right. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're ever so thankful for all the blessings of life. You have given us just so much. We've been blessed so much. Now, let's don't go grab for a bill, falls in our purses and say, I hate to give this. Let's be joyful in our heart to say, God, you bless me. Now I want to give some back to you and thank you so much for what you've done. In his name, amen. There's a collection plate here to my left and back in the back on the right hand side. Thank you. say thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I hope this was a, a blessing to you as we all uh, worshiped and honored God uh, together. Uh, just a few announcements before we dismiss. If you are visiting with us this morning, uh, we'd like to ask if you're comfortable to fill out uh, the connection card on the back of the pew in front of you. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. You could also scan the QR code on the bulletin if you'd rather fill out one uh, digitally. Uh, but we're especially glad that you're with us. Uh, we will have our Bible study tonight at five o'clock, so I encourage you to come and uh, we'll read and discuss some more about the first chapter of John and uh, Jesus as the word of life and how his blood cleanses us when we walk in the light. We'll talk some more about those things, so I invite you to come and be part of that. Um, we'll have our Come and See Outreach event coming up soon, September 14th. Uh, and then I'm excited to announce, I think this might be a little tentative, but the current plan on September 15th, very next day, Sunday evening, uh, Dale and Doris Hunt, uh, who are not able to join us physically for worship very often because of health concerns, but they would like, instead of coming to us, they'd like us to go to them and have Sunday evening Bible study at their place. And so uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated if there's any changes to that, but current plan September 15th, we'll have Sunday evening Bible study at Dale and Doris's place. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, Brother Charles is leading us in prayer. Charles, if you would be sure to, to lift up Gunner in prayer. Because uh, he's, he's in the ER this morning, so if you'll be praying for him. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time before we, uh, before we dismiss? Okay. Well, if you would be standing, we'll be led at this time in our closing song, and then uh, Brother Charles will dismiss us with a word of prayer. I must admit that Lee led this song last week and it's been in my head all week, so I had to sing it this morning. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a 
the great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made it to all my sin, because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free, for God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon him there, the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, another beautiful day to worship you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, we see the Sioux made it back today, and we're so glad of that. Heavenly Father, we just pray for the rest that's got ills and aches and pains that they can get over them and come back to, to us. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the church around the world that it continues to be in truth and uh, love and truth, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things you do for us, our blessings that you give us each day, our, our uh, life and family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the uh, just thank you for your son who came and died for our sins and we pray for the troops around the world we pray for our country in Jesus name we pray amen <laughs> 